Hi guys, Robert here. I uh, had some uh, interesting questions from our game last night. I uh, figured I'd do a little video here just to kind of uh, help some people along that might not know the intricacies of the 5e character sheet on Roll20. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the character screen and I'm going to find my character. Uh, my character is Night Whisper, a uh, wood elf ranger. I'm going to come back over here to the chat screen so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, first thing we're going to do on the core stats screen, it's also available on show all, which is basically the entire character sheet. But on the core stats page, there's a button here in the middle, initiative. In order to roll initiative from this screen, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to highlight your token and then you're going to come over here and hit the initiative button. What that does is it rolls initiative in the chat window for you and it also updates it on the turn order. So if the GM says, you know, roll initiative, boom, it goes ahead and it auto populates that and it helps the GM DM, um, expedite the process a little bit, a little bit faster. Uh, you can also roll saves directly from here if you need to roll a dex save or a constitution or a strength um, you can roll it directly from this window here um, and if you uh, basically are, are unconscious on the ground and you have to roll uh, a death saving throws you can also roll those directly from the character screen on the core stats page under skills uh, it's got all of the skills here and it has the dice that you can roll them for so if you're proficient in stuff it automatically tabulates all of your bonuses into it and when you roll the the check it goes ahead and it uh, it pops it up there you'll notice that it's got two numbers on the roll the first number is basically your roll if you have advantage it goes ahead and rolls both die so you do not have to and you would take the higher if you have disadvantage it rolls both and you take the lower pretty simple or if you just need to roll a check and you don't it's in a skill if he just says roll a strength check you can roll a strength check uh, it says no skill pretty simple there background there's not a whole lot on the background that you can do other than you know keep track of of all of your stuff under class uh, you list all of your class abilities you also track your levels here so when you level up you change the, whatever level it is to two and then what it does is it tabulates and adds for instance your second hit die on this page um, and uh, depending on your level it will increase your proficiency bonus automatically let's go back and change that back to one um, if you have a class specific macro that you need to roll that's not taken care of anywhere else in the page it, it will roll you can add that in as a macro here you would just simply name it type in what it is you know class macro ranger macro one um, and then underneath it you would write uh, if you're rolling a dice roll 1d6 plus one I just kind of making that up and it says class macro because that's what it is and it's rolling your 1d6 plus one directly from there um, and you can just delete it out like so under weapons uh, you can list all of your melee weapons all of your ranged weapons um, you notice I am dual wielding daggers and I have a longbow for the daggers I have my main hand which gives me my hit bonus my damage die are here I get a three damage bonus and it's piercing my offhand you'll notice I have listed as offhand I do not have a two-handed weapon fighting style so offhand is there same thing but it doesn't add the damage bonus so now when I roll attack um, with my main hand and then I can attack with my offhand uh, say my main hand hits I would roll with the main hand damage and it adds the plus three uh, and you can kind of see that in the in the little block of text there um, it does not add that as the damage for the offhand unless you have the two-handed weapon fighting style like that Oop, wrong button like that it added the three back in there if we go back to 
regular offhand, it takes it out. Um, and uh, we'll go over to the spell book. Uh, I'm only level one, uh, level one ranger. I do not get spells, but say for instance I did, uh, I went ahead and put two in here just for demonstration purposes. Uh, it's a level one spell, and you've got cantrips on here, level one spells, level two, level three, all the way to level nine. Um, under level one spells, uh, I picked two that a ranger could potentially get. Uh, level one spell, cure wounds, school evocation. It's uh, cast time is one action. It does not require concentration. It's not a ritual, and yes, it's prepared. It's gained from ranger. Uh, I'm attacking a creature. The range is touch, and it's instant, uh, and it it's it has no duration. It just it's immediately gone. Components, uh, VNS. Then under the advanced tab, you basically give the spell description or uh, flavor of it and what happens uh, if you use it for a higher spell slot. Um, underneath here, there's a spell card. You can hit that and that will just basically put everything you, you put in the top box and it will put uh, the spell description and what it does at higher levels so your, your DM will know what's going on. Now this is not an attack, so attack is empty. There's no save associated with it. With it, there's no damage and there's no effects. But however, there is a healing associated with it, and it is 1d8 plus my wisdom modifier. So we hit that, and it's four HP healed. What is with all of the ones that I've rolled so far? Uh, that's pretty much that uh, for that ability. Down here, an ensnaring strike. It's conjuration. It's a bonus action, and it does require concentration. Uh, same deal underneath advanced. Um, technically, it's not an attack. This is uh, on my next attack, which we will go ahead and throw that spell card out there. Um, it says on the next attack, the creature will have to make a strength check against my spell save DC so I went ahead and put the save information here and it's ranger DC so if I hit that it says that they have to make a third uh, they have to do a strength saving throw against 13 and if they do not make that they take 1d6 piercing damage so I've got my damage right there and I can just roll that from the uh, from the direct spell and I don't have to go anywhere else uh, once you put it in here you don't really have to do a whole lot of remembering on the damage because it 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 automatically does it for you there's no guessing and there's no you know making sure you're, you're getting the abilities right uh, another cool thing I'm not sure if it's gonna let me do it with the spells but we'll we'll, we'll try under ensnaring strike under damage we'll see uh, no, it's not letting me drag the damage. But under weapons, uh, if the longbow ranged attack is something I do, would do a whole lot, I'm going to go ahead and grab the attack, and you've got a uh, macro bar down here at the bottom. So these are two that I know I'm going to do pretty much every fight. So I'm going to pull those down. I can also come over here, and if I don't want to pull my character sheet up every time we're about to get into a battle, I can pull my initiative down too. And the neat thing is, on the edge of them, it's got a little gray bar, and you can maneuver stuff around. So my initiative is first, then my range attack and my range damage. So I can roll those directly from the macro bar and not have to pull my character sheet up. So I keep the sheet open uh, for battles. So I can see that uh, a lot better, and I don't have to, to clutter my screen up. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, other things you can do, and I'll go ahead and do this now. There's a button to clear current chat log, and it's gone. Um, other things you can do, you can do rolls just directly into the window. And if you need to make a secret roll, you can do GM roll, and you can roll whatever. So let's say I'm doing a let's say I'm doing a stealth check and uh, I'm in communications with the DM and I'm like, hey, I want to do this, and the DM's like, okay, roll me a stealth check. So I would come to skills and stealth check. I get plus five, so it would be a one d twenty plus five. One d twenty plus five, and I'm just typing stealth. 
so he knows what it is and to GM and the only the the GM or the DM of the game actually sees that the other players don't see it so if you, you're doing some sneaky stuff behind the party's back you know you don't have to make them aware of it uh, when you're doing it so that it kind of enhances the role play a little bit um, anyway if you have any questions I will be on uh, roll 20 and I will also be available via Skype so feel free to ask Anyway, you guys have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.